Hi guys, Pete the Wargamer here, back with another Warcry speed painting tutorial. And in this video, I'll be tackling the unmade and once again using the Citadel range of paints to do so. Now the intention of this tutorial is to get your miniatures painted up to a respectable gaming standard in as little time as possible, using as few paints as possible. Because, after all, playing with painted miniatures of any standard is better than boring bare plastic. So some key things to note before we start. Paint all of your miniatures at the same time, applying each colour to each model before moving on to the next paint. And remember to keep the steps quick and not worry too much about the little mistakes or getting things perfect. The first step in painting is to prime so that the later layers of paint properly stick to the surface of the model. I've used a black primer for this as this will provide the shading in the deepest recesses, therefore removing the need for heavy washes. Over this black primer, we next want to apply some Zenithal shading by using some Gracia spray. By spraying this paint from above the model, we will create lighter areas towards the upper parts of the miniature, whilst leaving the black primer visible in areas that shadows would naturally occur in. I'm applying this particular layer using an airbrush here because the weather wasn't great for spray painting at the time of filming, but the same effect can be created by using the aerosol version of Gracia as well. So, at the moment, we have a model that has its shading, but is essentially in grayscale. Therefore, over the next few steps, we'll be starting to apply some colour, and the best way to do this is by the use of some contrast paints. The strong pigmentation and translucent nature of contrast means that when it's applied over areas of pre-shading like this, it will maintain that shading while simply adding colour. This means that applying colour is incredibly quick and easy to do. Perfect for speed painting. The first paint I'm using here is Apothecary White, and this is being applied straight from the pot over the masks, fabric, and shoulder pads. By applying this over the bright, almost white grey, we can create some subtle shading. Remember, when applying your contrast paints, to not let them pool too heavily. Try to spread them out evenly across the surface for the best results. To create the appearance of raw, flayed flesh, I will next be applying some Blood Angels Red across all of the exposed skin. As I wanted to create a slightly less intense red, I decided to mix in roughly the same amount of contrast medium into my contrast paint to reduce its strength. You can then apply this mixture across all of the areas of exposed flesh. When applied over the shading that we achieved with the Xenophil highlights, the result should be one of skin that's been peeled away, revealing the flesh underneath. For the areas of brown cloth and leather, apply some Saigor brown over them, taking care not to overspill onto the white masks, clothing and armour plates. If you have a steady hand, you can also use this paint to pick out the stitching in the skin tabard worn by the unmade. Next, we will be tackling the stitched together skin of the tabard using some dark oak flesh. To create a patchwork effect, I would recommend applying different intensities of the paint to each section. This strength can be controlled by adding more or less contrast medium or spreading the paint around a little bit more, in the same way that we did with our Blood Angels Red mixture. For the various metal areas, I wanted to create the effect of blackened steel in order to contrast against the lighter white of the armor panels. Black Templar was a good choice for this as it would give me a good starting color that I could easily and quickly apply to the miniatures. As the miniatures stand at this point, we now have all of the base colours, but there are a few finishing touches we can make to improve the overall look. The first of these is to complete the metal finish on the weaponry and other areas of black and steel. To do this, I'm using some graphite and lightly dragging it uh, against the edges. If you don't have access to graphite, any pencil will work fine. The result is a slight metallic sheen that's really quick and easy to apply. Finally, the models we have here are looking a little too clean for my taste, so we can use some of the paints that we've already used. First of all, I'll be applying some small dots of Blood Angels Red to create blood staining on the white and skin coloured areas. Similarly, we can use some heavily thinned Saigor Brown over these same parts to create the appearance of dirt and grime accumulating on them. And here we have the completed unmade warband. I finished things off by creating a simple basing scheme using textured paints, some dry brushing and some grass tufts. This entire warband of 9 miniatures took me just over 4 hours to paint, which can easily be spread out over a few evenings or over a weekend. While the paint job is fairly basic, it's a good way of quickly getting your warband painted up and playing Warcry with fully painted models. 
If you enjoyed this speed painting style of video and would like to see me give the same treatment to other miniatures or Warcry warbands, do let me know in the comments below. If you have any questions or would like to chat with others who enjoy my channel, I've set up a Discord server which you can find a link to in the description. And if you're looking to support me in making these videos, be sure to check out my Patreon page which you can donate to from as little as a dollar a month and that just helps me to produce these videos. So the only thing left to say is, thanks for watching and goodbye.